Alrighty guys, so in the previous video we learned how to store our scrap data inside a MySQL database and in this video obviously as you can see on the screen we'll be learning how to store that scraped data inside a MongoDB database. So obviously we are going to be going by step by step because MongoDB is a little bit, uh, it's actually pretty simple but you need to follow a particular set of steps. So what we are going to be doing is that we are going to be following the steps that we have written inside this notepad. So the first step is to install MongoDB, pretty simple so you can just copy this installation link paste it on your browser and you can install the version that you require if you're on Linux you can install the Linux version but I am on Windows so I'll just install the Windows version and after installing it you'll be able to access MongoDB but make sure you install everything that is given inside this MongoDB database make sure you don't install like custom installation so don't just install particular parts of MongoDB I want you to install everything that is inside this installation package also there is one thing inside this installation package known as MongoDB Compass that is kind of like the GUI version of accessing this MongoDB database kind of looking at the stuff that we have stored inside our Mondo MongoDB database creating new connections etc. And for some reason if you are not able to install MongoDB Compass GUI software using this link what you can do is you can just go to this MongoDB products compass it's free even though it's written dry free but actually it's pretty free you won't be able to do advanced stuff but you'll be able to do pretty easy stuff like uh, looking at the database etc which we want. So just install this uh, MongoDB compass and uh, after you've installed this MongoDB compass the installation will kind of after you install this the MongoDB compass will somewhat look like this. So now that you have installed MongoDB and you have already installed MongoDB Compass, I'm going to assume that you have installed both of them. Then we can go to the second step. The second step is to create a folder known as data and inside this data folder create another folder known as DB. So that is why I've written the steps because a steps a little bit weird. So that's why I want to make sure that you guys remember everything that is in the video. So the second step is to create a folder inside the C drive and which says data and db. So what we are going to do is we are just going to go inside our C folder. So inside our C folder as you can see I have already created this folder known as data and if I open it up there is another folder known as db and then Mongo has done some stuff inside it. We haven't put in these files MongoDB automatically has put in these files. Now what I want you to do is again go to the C drive and then after installing MongoDB make sure you have installed MongoDB. I know I am saying it again and again but after you have installed MongoDB you can go to program files then you can search for MongoDB folder and inside this go to the server and 4.0 inside the bin and then I want you to double click on this file known as mongod.exe. Running this mongod.exe file actually starts your server and when you double click on this file and run this file you will get a kind of a CMD terminal which will look like this and at the last it will say waiting for connections on port 27017. The port number might be a little bit different but if you are getting an error make sure that you have created that data and db directory if you haven't you'll get an error. Now make sure that you are running this mongod.exe in the background while we do other stuff inside our code. Alright so we have created the folder we have ran the mongod.exe that is why we are on this step. I've numbered these steps a little bit wrong but it's alright. So now we have to install pymongo on pycharm. So we can go back to our pycharm and if you're not using pycharm don't worry you can just write pip install pymongo and it will be all right, it will be fine. But we are using PyCharm, so we'll go to File, we'll go to Settings, and in file Project Entrepreneur, we'll click on this plus icon over here, and we'll just for search for PyMongo, and there is our PyMongo, and we just need to install package. And if you're not using PyCharm, you can just type in pip install PyMongo, and it will do the same for you. Now I've already installed PyMongo, so I won't get into it. As you can see over here, I've already installed PyMongo. Now if we go to the next step that is um, we have to make sure that our pipeline is activated. What I mean by that if we go to our settings.py file and if you scroll down a little bit about 67th line you'll see that these three lines are commented or uncommented. Make sure these three lines are not in comments like all of these other lines and that is what basically I mean by making sure that your pipeline is activated. 
Now that our pipeline is activated, we can actually start writing code inside our pipelines.py file, which is actually the next step. So now we need to import pinemongo inside our pipelines.py file. So we're just gonna write import pinemongo. And then inside this class code tutorial pipeline, we are going to create a initialization function by just writing in def underscore underscore and then clicking enter. And then inside it, we can do all kind of stuff and we'll start by creating a function. Now, if you don't know what this initialization function is, make sure you watch the classes and objects video, which I'll probably add somewhere at the starting of this video series or at the end of the video series. That is kind of the extra videos that you need to know to become comfortable with all of this stuff, but you don't need it. You can just think of this as the initialization function that is very important when you create a class of code tutorial pipeline. Now inside this initialization function, we'll actually try to connect to our MongoDB database. So for that, we need to create a variable and we'll just call this variable as con variable that stands for connection. And now we can just type in pymongo.mongo client. And inside this, we need to give it two parameters. The first parameter is localhost because we are doing it on our own computer. And then the second parameter is the port number. Now, what I want you to do is actually open up your MongoDB compass that you installed at the starting of this video. And if you open up your MongoDB compass, this will actually look like this. And as you can see, the host name is localhost and the port is 27017. So that is what we are going to be putting in inside our Mongo client. So if we go back over here, we can just put in uh, two, let me just go back and check the port number again, 27017, 27017. And we have to put comma over here, don't forget that. And now we have created a connection variable. After that, we need to create a database. So creating a database is pretty easy. We just write self.con. And then over here, we are just gonna write the name of the database that we want. So the name of the database that we want is, uh, let's call it my quotes. And inside single quotes, we're just gonna write my quotes. And we are going to save this inside a variable and we are going to call this variable as db. So these three lines create a connection. This line creates your database. And now you already know that every database has a table inside it. Although concept of Mongo is a little bit different, but if you kind of see it as a conventional database, every database has a table. So now we have to create a table. For that, we need to create something known as a collection. So we just write self dot, uh, let's call it collection. And inside this, we are just gonna write DB and we are gonna write the name of the table that we want. And I want to call it quotes underscore DB. So we have done a pretty basic stuff over here. We have created the connection. We have created our database and inside that database, we have created a table and we have stored the properties of that table inside this variable of collection. And now we can store inside this table or indirectly we are storing inside this variable that has the quotes underscore TV table. So now we are going to go inside this process underscore item, which had this item variable, which is very important. So every time an item is scrapped, it is sent to this pipeline and inside this pipeline is goes inside this code tutorial pipeline. Then automatically it goes inside this initialization function. A connection is created, a database created, a table is created, and then it goes to this process underscore item function, which it sees what it is supposed to do with that item. So now we want to store this item inside this table. So that is pretty easy. We are just gonna write self dot collection and we want to insert stuff inside our table. So we can just write self dot connection dot insert. And then inside that we are gonna write dict because we are going to be storing inside our MongoDB and anytime you store stuff inside MongoDB, it is in kind of dictionary form. And then we are just gonna write item that we are getting from this variable. And that is pretty much it guys. Uh, don't believe me, let's just try it out and see if it works. So before even we do that, I just want to open up this MongoDB compass and I just want to click on this connect so that we can connect to this connection. And if you see over here, there are just three databases, admin, config, and local. There is no my quotes table database over here. And there is no, so if you go over here, you can see that there's my quotes database and there's quotes underscore TV, that is quotes underscore table. And there are no these two properties inside our MongoDB compass. So the database is going to appear over here and the table is going to appear over here. I just want you to look out for it. So now what you can do is we can go back to our uh, 
scrappy and now we can open up our terminal and let's actually start it from the start and we can go inside our code tutorial folder and like we have done with all the previous projects we are just going to crawl it simply and we're just going to write quotes and let it crawl and after it has finished crawling we can go back to our mongodb compass and kind of just refresh it a little bit and it will say loading uh, database and as you can see there is another database over here known as my codes and if we click on it you can see that there is table inside it which is called as codes underscore tv and it has 10 elements and now if we even open it up a little bit more and we actually have a look what is inside these elements you can see that it has a quote the author and the tags so guys, uh, this looks pretty good and this is pretty much it for this video and actually surprisingly this was the easiest of the database to implement because it is just so quick and so simple. So guys, this is pretty much it for this video. In the next video, we are going to be learning a little bit of advanced Scrappy. So we are going to be learning how to crawl the various links inside our website. So I'll see you over there.